Bob in Hebron, Kentucky writes, Paul, with the excitement that I have in hearing the news of your new Stellar Gold DAC release, and that is some pretty exciting stuff, I think I'm finally ready to abandon the DAC in my preamp and introduce a separate DAC component. Good work, sir. That's a, a good way to go. Th those built-in DACs are just what we call courtesy DACs. They're kind of like the courtesy power cables that we include. They work, but honestly, if you're into high-end audio, they're not worth your time. Okay, anyway, uh, I made the decision a while back that when I buy my first DAC, that it would be a PS Audio DAC. Well, thank you, sir. Now that I'm ready, I wonder if you can tell me what the differences are between your gain cell, Stellar Gold, and Direct Stream MK2 DACs, and what improvements or differences in sound I would hear as I step up in class and dollars. Well, all three of those are wonderful sounding DACs, and they all progressively sound better than the other one. They're, boy, what are the differences? Well, technically, the gain cell DAC is a single ESS based chip with a, um, a fancy output stage. So it is uh, one, one of the better ESS uh, DAC chips and DAC chips, DACs in general are very dependent. Their sound is very dependent on how one does a couple of things. One, and most important, the output stage. In a DAC, that makes almost more difference than the DAC itself until we're getting down into fine details. But in general, what people do is they'll buy a ESS DAC, they'll engineer it into a product, and then they'll throw an op amp, a little chip op amp on the output. That can work, and it certainly does. That's like 99.9% .9 of all the DACs out there in the world. That's what people do. It's easy to design. I mean, it takes five minutes of design to put a chip op amp on the output. Selecting the next step up from that is selecting, as an engineer, which op amp you're going to, because there are some great chip op amps out there, but A, they're expensive. B, some of them are a little hard to design because they're very fast and they need extra care and power supply, this and that, or maybe a discrete buffer on the output, et cetera, et cetera. The best way to do it is to build your own output stage as in a discrete or a combination of uh, chip DAC and discrete parts, and that's where you can really control the sound. And that would then be the next step up um, would be Stellar Gold. Now, Stellar Gold is different than the gain cell DAC, which is uh, basically, as I said, an ESS chip with a discrete output stage. It's a combo, it's a hybrid. The Stellar Gold DAC has a bunch of DACs in parallel. So you have four DACs for one channel, all put in parallel with a really trick, high slew rate, high bandwidth output stage that's all class A. It really is an amazing, amazing product. Huge step up from uh, Stellar, uh, the, the Gain Cell DAC. And probably that middle DAC, that Stellar Gold DAC, that's the one I think I would recommend to you for your starter DAC. The MK2 is a very different DAC. Now that is one where we uh, build our own DAC. We don't use an off-the-shelf chipset from ESS or from AK, uh, AKM or any of the other manufacturers. That uses what we call an FPGA, a Field Programmable Gate Array. And Ted Smith, our guru DAC designer, designs his own DAC inside of this multi-million gate device. And then the output to that, there's all kinds of trickery going on. I mean, talk about complex. That is one complex <laughs> DAC. But it's also the best sounding DAC we make by far. So that's kind of a lineup of the DACs. Again, I, I would, for, for your first DAC, I would go Stellar Gold. That's what I would. Thanks for the question. Good luck out there. Take it easy.